Well, I've got my favourite wingman back in the plane. Here we are. It's been so long, Alistair, it, it since has. I've flown with you. <laughs> Here we go for another adventure. I've missed you. Oh. Well, you've had all these uh, very other able substitutes in. Oh, but, Alistair. <laughs> It's never the same if you're not here. Uh, I know, I always seem to bring the, the, the adventure in, if it's intended or not. Well... <laughs> We're on approach. The big now will take off clearance. You all ready to go? I'm ready. Roger, roger. Oh, we'll just check that the runway is 03. That says 03. And that says 03. So we're in the right place, ready to go. Temperatures and pressures are in the green. SP's just creeping up. As you probably know, my flying videos show it warts and all. There's 60 knots. In other words, I think by telling you about my mishaps, mistakes and bad days, as well as the good stuff, it shows that we as pilots are not infallible. Many of you tell me that you appreciate this honest approach. As Alistair said, he and I have had some mini-adventures during our two or three years flying together, but today was probably the most interesting of them all to date. An in-flight electrical problem. The alternator was working fine on the ground, but appeared to fail not long after we set off for Duxford. This wasn't an emergency as such, but I learned quite a lot about myself and how I was affected by this failure of a significant part of the aircraft system. I hope you find it interesting. South End Radar, Golf Charlie Echo, India Zulu, request basic service. Golf Charlie Echo, India Zulu, South End Radar, good morning, flash message. Good morning to you, Golf Charlie Echo, India Zulu, PA28, uh, Biggin Hill to Duxford, VFR, just south of the QE2 bridge, uh, 2,100 feet on 1026, uh, routing via Earls Cone and Haber Hill, request basic service. South India Zulu, Roger Squawk 4575, basic service, QNH 1026. 4575, basic service, QNH 1026, Golf India Zulu. Golf in Jazulu, traffic opposite direction, just south of the bridge, tracking southwest bound there in a big in squawk, so probably back into big in, indicating 1,700 feet. Golf in Jazulu. Is that the traffic below us? I thought I saw it, but it wasn't, sorry. I... Okay, I just there he is, there. there. Oh my god, it's quite close, isn't it? Yeah, Golf in Jazulu, passing low down your right hand side now. Oh, Roger, yes, uh, we've just seen him and uh, we were notified by big in. Thanks, Golf in Jazulu. Roger. We've done Gloucestershire, and we had to dodge lots of rain showers, didn't we? That was a bit fraught, that journey, Gloucestershire. Oh, God, yeah, it's just like... Um... Hang on, I've got a warning on here. I've got altitude. I've lost... I've lost... All right, stand by. South End, Gulf, India Zulu. Gulf, India Zulu, South End. Uh, my alternator seems to have packed up. Um, I'm going to return to Biggin Hill. Gulf, uh, India Zulu, Richard, you require any assistance? Not at this time. Uh, I have a standby radio if uh, this one packs up, but it may take, I might be off comms for a bit. India, you're a job. Speak to begin. Thank you. Right. Uh, what was my heading? It was 03. The plane can fly perfectly happily without a battery. So if the battery goes dead, we're fine, Alistair. Yep. Uh, the engine won't stop. It wouldn't start again. It wouldn't start again, no. How do you know it stopped? Well, that light's come on, oh. and, and the, there's no charging on this. I'm just going to restart it. There's nothing. So I'm going to shut the. I'm going to shut the out the that off. Could you hand me my standby radio? And. Uh, because we, we don't have long before the battery dies. Let's turn off what we don't need. Golf India Zulu report uh, crossing over the river. Uh, Wilco, Golf India Zulu. 
On reflection, I probably should have done some quick troubleshooting here, considered my options and reassured my passenger before calling South End. The pilot mantra being aviate, navigate, then communicate. Seeing the ammeter reading zero was quite a shock to be honest. I knew instantly what this meant and I knew I wasn't going to continue the flight, but I didn't give myself time to consider the options. The priority was to land at the nearest suitable airfield. I instinctively chose Biggin Hill because I knew where it was and we weren't far away. But I didn't even consider South End, Stapleford, Earls Cone or Damons Hall, which were all nearer. That all said, I am confident Biggin Hill was the right decision. South End is in controlled airspace and I wasn't familiar with the other aerodromes. I would have had to pull out the charts, start reading them and look up frequencies and so on. But I do need to learn that I must stop and think properly next time. Uh, if the battery goes, we won't be able to talk to each other because the intercom will go okay. off. Okay. We've got a low volt warning light now. What else can I turn off? And turn the strobe off. Can you unplug that? Uh, Golf Indy Zulu is going to shut down my transponder if that's okay with you. I've got the QE2 bridge in sight. Indy Zulu, absolutely fine. Just let me know when you cross the river. Okay. It's not mandatory to carry a backup portable radio, but I think it's a good idea, particularly if you, like me, sometimes fly in cloud, IFR. With the alternator not working, the battery is discharging. India Zulu is very well looked after and expertly maintained, so the battery is quite healthy, but you really can't be sure how long you've got before the electrical systems start failing. They might give us a light signal if we lose comms. For that reason too, I carry a copy of the aviation light signals on my knee pad. These are light signals air traffic control towers may use to clear you to land if your radios aren't working. There's no need to acknowledge this transmission, but uh, I've been told begin you're on your way back, and they are also expecting the possibility that you may be non-radio. Uh, that's understood. Um, we do have the standby radio, and it's charged, so hopefully we'll be able to speak to them. Thanks. Go on, you do, Roger. And if you like, you can uh, free call Biggin Hill this or call Biggin Hill now. One two nine decimal four. Biggin Hill, one two nine decimal four. Thanks for uh, setting that up for us. Go on, you do. You're welcome. She three thousand feet. Climb altitude 3,000 feet, Arena 7-8. Golf Foxtrot, Charlie, hold it. Uh, Juliet 1, there is uh, priority traffic inbound. Big approach, Golf Charlie, Echo, India Zulu inbound. Arena 7-8, contact Thames Radar, 128.025, bye-bye. 128.025, bye-bye, Arena 7-8. Golf Charlie, Echo, India Zulu, big in approach, pass your message. Golf Charlie, Echo, India Zulu, back into you. At the QET bridge, uh, we have... Uh, no alternator, so we expect to lose comms shortly. We do have a standby radio, as I say, QE2 bridge, and we'll be routing via Swanley. Golf India Zulu, Roger. Big in QNH 1026, basic service, Squawk 7047, the 21 threshold QFE 1007, or the aerodrome QFE 1004. All runways are available for landing. Report your intentions. Uh, negative transponder due to battery. Uh, we won't be able to squawk, so QFE 1007 and uh, would like to join, uh, standard uh, join for runway 03, so joining from the dead side. Golf India Zulu, Roger, report three miles on the dead side, runway 03, left-hand circuit, the aerodrome QFE 1004. QFE 1004, say again, uh, reporting instructions. Golf India Zulu, report three miles on the dead side. We'll go Golf India Zulu. Delta, line up and wait, runway 03. Line up and wait, uh, Golf Yankee Delta, and uh, could I request uh, departure of uh, Seven Oaks rather than my original plan of uh, Kenley? Golf Yankee Delta, Roger. Right, see the Golf India Zulu, big India Zulu. Golf India Zulu, where if you lose comms uh, before three miles, continue to join route uh, overhead the tower, position downwind left hand runway 03, and watch for light signals. If I lose comms, uh, continue past the three mile point, uh, join overhead the tower, uh, report uh, and uh, join left hand downwind 03. Golf, India Zulu, and look for lights. And Golf, your Yankee Delta is uh, lining up 03. 
Delta Let's see the aerodrome over there. Three yeah. Minutes to take off the surface, right, yeah, the, 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 it's come back on. Oh no, it's gone off again. I'm not going to power it up again because it can catch fire. Let's not do that then, no. I let slip here to my passenger a big concern that was playing on my mind. Was the problem more serious than it seemed on the face of it? What had caused the alternator to fail? Was there a risk of a fire? Another learning point here for me, I must keep the more frightening possibilities to myself. Helsinki Delta, traffic east of the field routing towards a dead side join is a Cherokee, altitude 1,900 feet. Report to Seven Oaks, what level are you climbing to? Uh, climbing to 1,700 feet at this stage and uh, copy the traffic, Golf Yankee Delta. Golf India Zulu, traffic just airborne runway 03, shortly turning right towards Seven Oaks is a TB20 climbing to altitude 1,700 feet. And we're looking, Golf, uh, have it in sight, Golf India Zulu. India Zulu is approximately three miles on the dead side, uh, descending to circuit high. Golf India Zulu, Roger, next, make your next report on the final. We'll go Golf India Zulu. I can't see him. No. Came out, he's probably a bit further north to be honest, but he's going to come over the top of us, he might come. Keep a good look out for me to the right, there he is, up ahead, look. Oh yeah. Where's the tower? They fire, they, they've got light, a light gun and they will shine it at you. If we lose comms. Fuel is on, well we can't put the pump on because we haven't got any uh, power to power it. Put it on. Radios are tuned, we don't need them really. Temperatures and pressures are all green. Altimeters on QFE. They've got the fire engines out, Alistair. Oh, we've got, have they? Yeah. Nice. Clear to land for runway 03, surface wind 340 oh degrees God. and 10 knots. Clear to land 03, Gulf India Zulu. Surface wind 340 degrees, 11 knots. Now this was the biggest learning point for me from the whole flight. After seeing the fire service all lined up as a precaution, I felt really under pressure. It was no longer just a normal landing. Plus, the controller is helpfully giving me regular wind updates. It all feels very surreal. Honestly, my mind was buzzing at this point, and I don't think I was even taking in what the wind was actually doing. Instant wind, 330 degrees, 10 knots. Another thought going through my mind was that I can't go around, not with all these people watching. Of course, that was nonsense, but what I'm saying here is I felt really under pressure. 330 degrees, 10 knots out. And uh, Golf India Zulu, no assistance required. Uh, would like to taxi back to our parking uh, near to rest completions, if that's okay with you. Golf India Zulu, Roger, vacate right Alpha 3, taxi to Raz, and just for procedure, the five vehicles will follow you back to parking. Uh, Roger, right Alpha 3, back to Raz, uh, Golf India Zulu. Well, it's good practice for them, isn't it? Yeah. I have to say, I was quite glad to get back on the ground. Yeah. We, we'd keep flying. There was, golf, 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 there was no four, risk of the engine stopping. Oh, no. Like no. It's just that you'd lose comms as the battery dies. Well, that would keep you going for a little while, though, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know. It can sometimes, especially in cold weather, it can be quite short. Oh. Minutes, really. I hope you found the video interesting. Remember, I'm not a flight instructor. 
please subscribe to my channel, hit like, join me on Facebook or visit my website. Hope to see you soon. Well, there we are. Oh. How embarrassing. <laughs> Once I open the door and we can have a the scores. Need to get out. Yeah. Mind your foot on the cable. You're right. Hello. Hi there, thanks very much.